I so I guess I, maybe the what was the turning point for you? Where where do you feel like you had arrived on the world stage? I think day one of my swimming career. Um, the reason I give so much praise to Francis um, out of Malaysia was because even at fifteen or sixteen, he kind of instilled this uh, this belief that I was the best in the world. Um, you know. A little bit of naiv naivety because we'd be doing these practices and you'd be timing and you'd be saying like, you know, this is world class mm. when in reality I was a 16 year old boy in board shorts swimming in a pool. Um, but it kind of gave me that kind of glimpse of hope that, you know, possibly I can. And it was also around that same time where I got into, um, the law of attraction, which is something I know a lot of swimmers do use a lot of people in, in sporting do use. Um, some people don't as well, don't believe in it, but at 16, I bought into this thing that if you uh, visualize and manifest things into your life, you can, you know, basically create whatever you want. And so the two of those coming together, I applied them to each other. So swimming was my playground to play around with the secret or the law of attraction. And so that kind of led on to where most of my big gains came from swimming. Um, I see it from both sides, you know, the, it's very much a pseudoscience, but you know, the, the simple things that you do when you're trying to, you know, manifest or use the law of attraction is very, very helpful. Just in general terms of swimming, you know, you're constantly thinking about your race, you're setting goals, you're, you're always thinking about the, the future task. Um, so when I was 16, I actually had this dream of becoming world champion in the 50 meters butterfly, which is my main event at that time. Uh, so I kind of came back to England with this belief that I was one day going to be world champion. Um, but in terms of reality, I think it wasn't until 2013 when I went 23, one in the 50 butterfly at 18 or something. That was kind of when I thought, you know, I'm, I'm amongst the big boys, like I'm not quite there yet, but I'm, you know, I'm at a time which could potentially win a world champs. Yeah. And at that time, when I saw you physically look, you looked kind of prepared, which, which is unusual for someone your age, you know, you were physically there, but you could tell that just kind of mentally, emotionally, you, you maybe needed some more time to get to that point where you were playing with the big boys, but obviously in terms of talent and speed, you had it, you just had to refine it. Um, and, and that has happened over, over the years now where you're just a, a force, you know, um, that, that's exceptional in, in terms of the fact that you said you had a dream, we, you, you just mean you were, you were kind of visualizing these things or did you actually have a dream at night and woke up and like saw something? No, it was a visualization, like a, a dream is in like a, right. something you aspire to do. Right, right. Did you, uh. Were you uh, doing physical acts to manifest that, like writing things down, putting them on your walls? You know, how did you do it? Yeah, so this is um, something I've spoken about with a lot of people. And I wish I could bring up my old laptop because essentially what I used to do was at the start of each season, I would, you know, look at what's going to be coming up in eight, nine months, if it's the World Champs or Commonwealth Games. And I would set these very arbitrary times. I would say, okay, in the 53, I want to go this time, or 50 fly, I want to go this time. And I would, I wouldn't pull out of a hat, but I just kind of chose what felt right. And I would write these times down in this spreadsheet and I would create this little uh, vision board, which is mm -hmm. you know, quite commonly used. And then in the early days, it would be essentially every single night before going to bed, I would put my headphones on, listen to a song or two um, for about 20 minutes. And I would visualize the race over and over and over again. And I would do it in as much detail as possible. You know, I, I would know where I'm going to be racing and what it looks like and how it feels. And for three years in a row, uh, 2013, 14 and 15, um, essentially I hit all these times within 0 0.02 of a second. And I wish I could get them up. I'm, I'm sure I can at some point, but yeah, we need to find that, that spreadsheet pull up. Yeah. So I think, you know, Commonwealth games is my best example. I set a time of 21. 76 74 for the free freestyle and end up going 21 76 or 74 wow. and then 50 butterfly i think i put 22 94 and i went 22 93. so these are these are things which you know at the time i, I truly believed in like I, I 
was into that uh, philosophy. I mean, now I look back to it and I see, okay, I, I put so much effort into visualizing the races that of course I was going to do well. Um, and simply by doing these vision boards and, and putting the effort in that then leads you to do, you know, the right things at the right time. And it leads you down this pathway. Um, it keeps you accountable too, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. So you're, you're always thinking about what you're going to do and you're always kind of driven to this goal. And I think it was a very helpful way to, um, yeah, to kind of springboard myself into this career.